Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. In the early 20th century, oil was found under the Osage Reservation. Almost overnight, every member of the Osage tribe became spectacularly wealthy. But then, one by one, Osage members started to disappear. What happened? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, we're going to cover one of the original forms of property rights in the United States, the head right. Here are the top things you should know. Number one, what is a head right? A head right refers to a legal grant of land given to settlers during the period of European colonization in the Americas. Number two, where was the head right system used? Most notably, the Virginia Company granted head rights to settlers in Virginia. But this system was also used in Georgia, Maryland, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Number three, who was given head rights? They were granted to those who were willing to cross the Atlantic and help populate the colonies. They were also granted to those who would pay for the transportation costs of an indentured laborer, and more notoriously, for a slave. Number four, how large was a head right? Most head rights were between 1 to 1,000 acres of land, but the typical size was around 50 acres. Number five, what was the point of the head right system? The system was intended to solve labor shortages due to the advent of the tobacco economy, as the tobacco crop required numerous workers. Number six, what were the consequences of the head right system? The head right system was originally supposed to entice people to bring over laborers and settle the colony. However, the impacts rippled far beyond that. For one, many head rights ended up accumulating in the hands of one or a few individuals, as the wealthiest members of the colonies would pay to bring lots of laborers over and keep all the head rights associated with those individuals. It also increased tensions between indigenous tribes and colonists because individuals were often granted land in regions bordered by native tribes. Finally, in many instances, the system was characterized by lack of oversight and in some instances, outright fraud. And in many cases, more head rights were distributed than there was land available. And number seven, how long did the head right system last? The head right system lasted from 1618 until 1779 when it was canceled by the General Assembly because there were too many claimants and not enough land to fulfill those claims. However, though for the most part the head right system was abolished in 1779, there were a few types of head rights that survived into the 20th century. Which brings me back to the Osage murders. Their story was recently detailed in the book and upcoming movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. To quote from the book, In the early 1870s, the Osage had been driven from their lands in Kansas onto a rocky, presumably worthless, reservation, only to discover, decades later, that this land was sitting above some of the largest oil deposits in the United States. Almost overnight, the Osage became the wealthiest people per capita in the world. To deal with the distribution of this wealth, Congress instituted a head right system under which each member of the tribe was entitled to royalties from oil production, rights that could not be sold, only inherited. Sadly, for Molly Burkhart, one member of the Osage Nation, these rights led not only to wealth, but tragedy. She had married a white man and lived in a grand wooden house with her family and ailing mother. Close by lived her three sisters. Many had recently died of a mysterious illness. Then, on May 21, 1921, her older sister Anna disappeared. A week later, her body was found. She'd been shot in the head. A few weeks after that, Molly's mother took a turn for the worse. She began to waste away, and within two months, she too was gone. Not long after that, Molly awoke in the middle of the night to a loud explosion. Her sister Ruth's house was in flame. It had been blown up, killing Ruth and her husband. Soon, 
Molly, too, began to experience an illness similar to her mother's. Meanwhile, more bodies turned up on the reservation, and by 1924, there were at least 24 recorded murders. In one of its first major homicide cases, the FBI uncovered a conspiracy that encompassed many of the white residents of the area, including Molly's husband and uncle-in-law. The plotters would marry into an Osage family and then one by one kill each member in order to inherit all of the family's head rights. And this is precisely what happened to Molly in a crime that robbed her of her family and found her betrayed by the person she trusted most. But the story doesn't end with Molly. The legacy of loss continues today. For by the time the conspiracy was uncovered, approximately 26% of all the Osage head rights had been transferred to non-tribal members. A fact further consolidated in 1984 when an act of Congress made it very difficult for a non-Osage headright holder to give their headrights back to the nation. Yet today, with the recent spotlight on Molly Burkhart, Osage Councilwoman Marsha Harlan is leading an effort to overturn this law. She hopes that the book and movie will shine light on the issue, inspiring non-Osage to sell or otherwise return head rights to the nation. As Osage Mineral Council Chairman Everett Waller said, today we begin the process to work for justice and equity for our people. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about head rights? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.